Okay, so my channel's fixed. I made a, a stupid decision last Well, it wasn't really a decision. I fell asleep after dinner last night and slept for two hours. What's wrong with that? I can forget about sleeping at night if I do that. I can't fall asleep. So, last night I decided to go on to a forum. It's basically what I call a pointy head forum. It's IT guys in that, you know, internet people. So I go on there and uh, I was talking about to them, I, they tolerate me. I think I f they find me amusing, but they tolerate me over there because of my lack of knowledge and they find me amusing. So I was explaining to them what my problem was with Google+. And they says, well, does your Google Plus account still exist? And I says, well, apparently it does because people keep adding me to your circles. So the one guy says to me, well, did you try step one? I said, well, that depends on what the hell step one is. He says, okay, you got C cleaner, right? I said, yeah, I, I told me to get C cleaner, I got C cleaner. He says, okay, clear all the cookies out of your machine. When you go in, don't go on, don't log into anything. Log into Google Plus first before you log into YouTube. Just go straight into Google Plus and log in. So that's what I did, and my channel's fixed. So, what the hell? But anyhow, talk to these guys in there, and this one guy, I've heard, his, I've heard about his story before. Can I tell you that it's true? No. But this guy, back in the day, was a hacker. So he got, according to him, and according to a few other people in there, he got arrested twice. The first time he got arrested, they basically took it for a preliminary hearing and the government says we know he did something but we're not sure exactly what but we know it was him and the judge says get the fuck out of here so they let the guy go so the second time they busted him they took him for a preliminary hearing before a friendlier judge friendlier to them not to him and he set $500,000 straight cash bail, and the guy sat in jail for six months. And then when he had to trial, the government still could not explain to the satisfaction of anyone involved what exactly he had done. But he had done six months in jail, and he's been arrested twice for hacking. So, of course, that would rule him out for a job with, the, as a, for, with an NSA subcontractor, wouldn't it? Oh, hell no. He claims that what he does is he'll go and apply for a job when he runs out of money with an IT support company that has an NSA contract. He says in almost every case they put him to work before vetting him. Before they checked him out, they put him to work. He says sometimes they'll work there three weeks and they'll say, hey, we're going to let you go. You know, We find out some shit about you. But other times, this one company he worked for for six months the company said his vetting came back clean. In other words, he was never vetted. But nobody ever did even the first basic step to find out if he had ever been arrested or anything for hacking. They never even, you know, did a security check on him. He says that company he has worked for twice. They finally caught up with him and fired him after six months. He reapplied with the company and went to work and worked for him for a month and a half before they said, holy shit, we fired this guy six months ago. He's a hacker. But he was telling me that the reason there's all these exploit things going on with these companies and everything is because NSA is insisting that when all these software companies, they don't even want a back door. They want a window left open. And they want to be able to go into that site at all times. Now what's the problem with that? Every one of these NSA people that work for the, the contractors, every one of them is an IT guy, and every one of them knows how to get into every one of these sites. These guys talk among themselves, if, if you may not be connected with this deal, but you know about it because you talk to these other ones. I says to, guy, well that's going to be kind of problematic. I says, don't take offense to this. But I says, my image of an IT support guy, I dealt with a lot of these people when I was in the business world, 
And my bosses knew nothing about computers. Half of them didn't even have computers on their desk back then. But we had to use computers in the stores. So you deal with these IT guys. I, I says, my opinion of an IT guy is that's someone that if you drag him out of the basement, he does very well with machinery. Computers and that, great with. Not so well with people. If you drag him out of the basement into the sunlight, he starts screaming and points up to the sky and says, what's that big orange thing? And the guys start, they, they're all hollering. They says, yeah, that's pretty much us. I said, so all of these people that are not well socially acclimated and everything, they can all get into all of the sites because this information is shared by them on how to get into these sites because of all these goddamn contractors that NSA has hired. And who do they get to work for them? They get people to work. The contractors hire someone that knows ten times as much com about a computer as they do, and then they put them in charge doing things. The government has people smarter than them setting up these programs. So I don't know. I find that scary as hell. The d <laughs> these IT people could take over the world. They could launch missiles, do whatever the hell they want. So I don't know. That's just more food for thought. So that's where you get, get guys like a 17-year-old Russian boy that makes that created that virus that took down Target and everything. He can get all the information he needs from IT support people. So I don't know, it's just something to think about. I think they're making a big mistake. This NSA may be our downfall after all.